Welcome back to the Justice Conference Asia 2015. I'm here with Yang, who's an advocacy uh, pioneer in Cambodia. You've been doing a lot of work uh, with the local government. Um, do you feel like that, that you'll be able to make progress, that the local government is willing to work with you? Yeah. So, okay. Uh, we are the try uh, to base and then make more relationship with them and one step to the step. So we wanted to know how we can support the government because the uh, Cambodian government needs support from NGO and then human resources and financial resources. So we need to, but if we are in the NGO, we are not have their uh, money to support them. I find that, but we are involved a lot with their uh, technical support for them. For in uh, my time, I spend 30 percent of my time to helping on a technical support. Like I, I done on their uh, like their planning, action planning for the government, and then monitoring and report writing, and then I send all uh, everything for them. So you're doing a lot of work for them, which is one of the reasons that they want to work with you. Yeah. Now, now a lot of people say, of course, in Cambodia, that the government's very corrupt. Yeah. Is it possible to build those relationships and still keep your hands clean? <laughs> Uh, yes, somebody, I agree. Uh, somebody uh, still uh, corrupt, but uh, uh, some of them are not corrupt. So they're going to work with them and then how we are not corrupt with them. And we find a way how we locate it, don't give them a corrupt. Example, it, they try us the money and then uh, we don't give them the money. And if we use the money and make sure they are use their rice money, not give the money to the, the pocket. So if they uh, they try to corrupt, we are saying no we with, with them. So make sure we are not getting involved with corrupt. And then we are know some of them they are corrupt, but some of them they are not corrupt. So we try to work with people who are not corrupt on not that area. Because if you are try to advocate with them too much, and then uh, we are risk for us. We take a risk for us. Because the government, they'll, some of them, they're in the Cambodian people who are rich and very rich, and right. poor, very, very poor. So we're going to support the, the poor, not support the rich. Right. Uh, on the, the, yeah. so, so it sounds like you're making some good progress with the government, which is very encouraging news. Yeah. Uh, but you also mentioned that there's a lot of risk as well, and that you also meet with a lot of opposition coming from some of the communities. Can you tell us what that opposition would be? Uh, yes, uh, some people we are working on that area, and then if we have made with a risk, and we will bring those idea, and then to uh, writing report and then find evidence, and to, to speak up with the government. So they are, oh, I met with this area, and then we will risk, and you can help all this area. So they come coming up, and then they find out information and solve the problem in the community level. But when you go into the community, sometimes, uh, because you're working with human trafficking, right, yeah. there are people in the community that really hate you guys. It was really interesting to hear yeah. some of the stories. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, what happens when you work in those communities? In the, when we're working with the government, and then we, we know, we are we start a search, and who, and how many traffickers are there, and how many victims are there. So we un identify who are, who are they. So some people, they, are, uh, they hide themselves, they are Trafficker, and then they are they most of them are women. They are trafficker, and then how they're young men. They're the gangster for the protection with us. Uh, so they they come, and then we bring. If we uh, if we know that we're really high risk, and then we have good relationship with the high official police, and then we come and we bring local police with us, oh, wow. okay. and then and then help us to protect ourselves. Wow. So we need to smart and then protect ourselves if very high risk. But it's a low risk, and then we say, oh, it's low risk. We just bring our uh, men, staff, and go with them, and then make our staff safe. Wow. So we want to see who, what kind level of risk. And before we go to community, and then we need to do assessment. We call risk assessment. And then we ask the risk assessment, and then we know what level we are. So that uh, make us uh, self for the community and then bring, uh, we uh, met a lot of the challenge and then every year we got so many challenges. Sometimes and then a uh, very high police official come to our office, 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 office and they say why you do this case, why you do this case. Because some of the high official police, son or the relative, they get involved with a trafficker. They are a trafficker. So they, they use their, uh, these people to advocate with us and then not allow us to do it. But we uh, have another 
uh, support from government. Oh, I have this area and then support. Again, so the government get the support for help this problem for us. Wow. So we need to be very really smart yeah. on that area. It sounds like you have to be very careful who's your friend and who's your enemy because even in the same community you have friends and enemies. Yes, yes. Um, but one of the things you mentioned also is about um, when someone, you know, a trafficker is, uh, um, is found and then those who've been trafficked are even rescued, yeah. that's really only the first step. That The real difficult part can be getting that person back into their community successfully. Yeah, and uh, that's the area we are uh, in our strategy, we want to get the, the children back to community. And before we go there, and then this the, the policy we are guideline with the government. So we call do we call family assessment. We call community assessment. So we we do assessment one time, one time, two time. And if we said that if we send the children go to community, it's safe for them or not? If it's not. And then we not send them go them not send go we send uh, looking for a shelter and we say and then again help them. But if the the community itself and the family support them and then everything, then mother not got involved with trafficking, and then we are protect them and then we are now on all the we let the community uh, like the local authority know and how they should be protected up to do the area and we also get in give the the phone number for the to the community if. They have emergency call and then we'll they call us right. and we are immediately go there wow. because our staff available 24 hours sometime at night time and, and Sunday Saturday or wow. we are available for that yeah. so we are immediate uh, to help them quickly wow. or we can ask the police a local police there and then to, to intervene before we are go there okay. yeah so wow. a lot of work yeah, yeah. well uh, thank you so much for being here at the conference and thank you so much for your hard work in Cambodia.